You are wondering how to raise and care for boa constrictor. Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how we do it and throughout our experience, how we raise and breed our boa constrictors. Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here. Now we're gonna talk about breeding boas and not just breeding boas, but raising them to breeding boas. Now you can use this information um, for you at home just to raise your animal without breeding them, but you can also use that information to possibly wanna make a breeding project. Now we're not gonna talk about breeding boas for money, but we're gonna talk about breeding boas as a hobby. So this is really gonna be how we take care of our boas. Now you could change it to an aquarium if you have it at home, because I wouldn't necessarily keep them in a PVC cage at home, but um, nonetheless, let's start it off. Now, let's talk about a baby boa. So you found yourself from a breeder, from a pet store, you bought yourself a little baby boa constrictor. Um, it can depend, just know for a fact, if they're Colombian, Surinams, Guyanas, uh, maybe island localities or whatnot, to see how big your boas are gonna go. Now for us, we work with mainly central boas and then some Colombian boas. Now the Colombian boas are actually our biggest uh, species of boa that we get. So these guys get probably around um, close to 10 feet and they get a nice big girth uh, on them, especially for the females. The males, we keep them like a slimmer. No. As you have that baby, you set them up, you put a heat pad, you make sure that your temperatures are proper. Um, and we feed our boas at first um, like a jumper mice. So we feed them mice because the ratio of calcium, like bone structure in the mice is actually better than a rat of the same size. Now, once we they reach a certain size, probably a size, I'm gonna pull one out for you guys. Um, so around this size right here. So at this size, we start feeding them like jumper mice. So this this female here was, uh, was feeding on adult mice. And then with boas, it's so easy, right? So we just change them to, jun to junior rats at that point on and then it's gonna be rats for the rest of their life. Now, we like to grow our boas very, very slowly. Now, over the years, boas have, uh, there's so many mutations that they're actually, their lineage, there's less wild caught, sometimes are a little bit weaker. So we take our time. We're not in a hurry with boa constrictors. We take three to five years to grow our animals, to being adults, especially the females, will take like four to five years and the males maybe more three to four. Now, we just grow them slowly. Why? Because we've been working with bows for over 20 years and they do not react really well with power feeding. So we like to keep them like slender because they actually, if you overfeed them, they will actually get a lot of fat reserves. Now we've had females that we had a, we did dissection when they passed away and they had huge fat reserves. Like uh, they, they, like not just fat reserve, they're not even reserved, they just gained a lot of fat and it actually probably caused some organ failures and thus why it the animal would have passed away. So it's very important to take your time with them. Now, we keep them in, in basically in shoe boxes. Uh, as they go because we work with so many animals that we do that now depending how they are now this one is in the last shoebox size so we have like a like a, a smaller bin and then we'll grow up to this size bin and then after that we're going to take them out right away to our pvc cages so you can see those pvc cages are actually boa file um, pvc cages um, we used to be able to get them in canada uh, uh, like years ago, like we're, it's probably over 10 years that I had the, like probably 15 years I have all those bins, but I know that they don't ship to Canada anymore. But if you're in the U S I believe that they still do have them. We love them. We actually had them. Um, we could check them inside. They can come in. So I had extra vents 
that were installed for them. I just like air aeration a little bit more, but it does create a little bit of complications when it comes to humidity. So I do have to make sure that my cages are a little bit more humid because with the heat, uh, it creates that as well. Now, what I'm gonna show you guys is um, back in the day I did, uh, we used to have them on um, like in homemade cages and we had lights and everything on them. So this is a, for people wondering, it's a Hypo IMG boa that we are growing up. So this is a female uh, about, uh, she's about two years old actually. And then uh, she's growing really, really well. We love her. So now we've, over the years, we've used many, many different substrates. She doesn't want to come out. Um, so we've used many substrate from Aspen bedding. Uh, we, used, we used like recycled paper or like paper bedding but we definitely went back to um, the cocoa husk. So we really like the cocoa husk because of its um, like uh, uh, properties of not molding. So it, the cocoa husk doesn't really mold except uh, when they shit or they piss or whatnot. It does really well and it holds humidity really, really well. So what we do is we have um, our water bowl and every week we'll just empty out the water bowl, mix the cocoa husk, do some spot cleanings and then probably once every three, four months, we'll just change the whole cage, uh, clean it all up and go from there. Now, you can see, oh, look at this. this. So this is a shed. So our, you can see like she's growing really, really well because she actually just shed. So we, since I'm already in the cage, I'm gonna remove them. Now our water bowls here, what I'll do is I'll just empty it here. Uh, so I use the Zoomed corner bowls. I love them because <laughs> they don't really tilt, they fit and like snug right well in the corner. Uh, so these are the ones that I like. They're plastic, they're very um, light, and then they actually like last forever. Like, I mean, we just disinfect them once in a while. Uh, we'll soak them in Javel, and then they do really, really well. So we use the cocoa husk right now. And then what we use for heating is actually, I will show you guys, are these Zoomed uh, mats. Now, um, the Habitat heaters. Now, okay, a lot of people put the heat pads under the bin. Um, but I really like to have them inside the cage. I make sure that I put a lot of substrate uh, over it, probably like an inch to two inches of substrate over it. If you'd have a, a tank, like a glass tank at home, then you would put the heat pad under it. They have like sticker uh, heat pads that you can put. You could use heat cable or whatnot under the tank. That would work as well. Now, what I like about this is that because as they're gonna get bigger, Right now, this would just be how I keep them, but as they get even bigger and they start breeding, I actually give them a hiding vent. So we're just gonna back up here a little bit and I'm gonna show you guys. We just add a bin on here. Now this bin, what is fun is that um, they're not in feeding mode, right? We don't feed these animals as much as the ones that we're growing uh, because we're just maintaining them and we're gonna be like probably feeding them every uh, three weeks ish and we just make sure that they do well and then when it comes to breeding time we do that now i actually add um sphagnum moss inside just to create like a little bit of a humid hide so even though the area outside will dry up inside we always try to keep it a little bit more humid now sometimes um the snake will actually uh go on top of the bit now for us it's even easier when it's not always me cleaning the animals but for the staff that are maybe less accustomed to working with them what happens is that you could just the snake is always hiding in the bin like they live in burrows uh where they or where they originate from and then basically the snake will just stay in the bin and then i can just put the bin down and then work inside the cage clean make sure everything is okay now, what I'm going to show you guys is this female here. So I don't know if you can see. Well, so this is a Motley Central. Now, she is gravid. So she's just basking inside there. Now, I don't want her to be directly on the heat pad because she'll like burrow in. So I don't want that heat to be all the way in. So the fact that she has that moss on her under her and then the the the, the cocoa husk under the bin uh, there's just a little bit more it's more ambient heat that she's getting so what happens is that when she does that what i'll do is i'll take the water bowl and just just wet her up make sure that the sphagnum will absorb real fast that water and just make sure that she keeps that um humidity higher as well now you can see that she is actually um like she's really really getting thicker and thicker at the bottom 
part of her body and that's because she is gravid so she she basically shed um in in uh it was in in what in january so she said shed it's about 105 days after that they shed their post ovulation shed that they're going to be um basically giving birth so we're aiming probably around april 15th now how do you breed those animals when they reach maturity probably three to five years old and they have a good size usually in the fall because with the summer everything is hot there's less heat fall we start having some changes in, te in temperature and we start inserting the male sometimes we will use um, an ultrasound just to see if there's any follicle development so for people that don't know what follicles are they're basically the eggs being formed they're they're in the like oviduct the the little eggs are being formed and then if ever she gets fertilized and she's ready then she, they'll get fertilized and become babies down the road now we'll basically insert the male and see if that male is actually going to have any interest with her. Usually a male and a female boa, they just stick together. And then if you're lucky, then you might see the male go around the female and like uh, intertwine their tails. And then usually copulations happen at that time. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. When it comes to breeding, you just got to make sure that you keep the males in and that you keep consistently feeding, but not too much, especially when a female is gravid. You don't want to overfeed a female gravid, especially when she gets close to her due date, because it actually might just push all the babies down. It happens sometimes that maybe like within a month she was due. Uh, we made a mistake, fed the animal a bigger prey. And the next thing you know, she prematurely gave birth but we want to make sure that she has some strength so we give her small meals to make sure that she has strength to be able to go through giving birth so the giving birth of well, for boas is actually a very difficult thing for the female i mean it takes a lot of energy so we got to make sure that that happens as well so that's basically a little bit how we take care of them i'm gonna actually see if Oh, you know what? We're actually very lucky because we have a male trying to breed a female right now. So this is what it would look like. So I don't know if you can see well. I'm just going to raise, go a little bit higher. But yes, here we go. That's very nice. So we can see that's an albino head leopard with a leopard. And you can see that male and the tail is just sticking right in. And then basically, is it a confirmed lock? Probably not. But I mean, they're definitely going at it and just snuggling together. And that's basically where it is. So, I mean, if you want to go ahead and breed them, that's fine. My only suggestion, make sure you talk to a local source, maybe a pet store or, um, uh, or maybe like another breeder or someone that you know that you can offload the babies to. Because once the babies hatch, it's a lot of work just and it costs actually a lot of money to maintain them to actually be able to sell them so you want to be able to just plan ahead not just breed them because you you want to try to breed them just try to get your work done you know like i mean you're not talking about making money but more about living the experience because out of all the reptiles that i have ever bred breeding boas and the moment that a female boa gives birth is one of the most memorable event as a reptile breeder for myself there's something about the smell the time the adrenaline rush that it creates that it just sticks in my mind as an amazing memories there's nothing that um can replicate that as well so guys that's pretty much all i have to say for you guys today um this is how we maintain raise our boas and how we breed them uh, there's a lot more that goes up when it comes to business but we mainly do it as a passion so i wanted to share that knowledge share that passion share this experience with you guys with how we do it today and um i hope you guys like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not if you're not subscribed, make sure you do uh, click that subscribe button, send us a follow, and then uh, let us know in the comments down below what other animals you want to learn about taking care, raising on how we do it. Uh, if there's actually anything that's different for you guys that may, might have been helpful, let us know. We want to we want to know maybe your experiences. Just share that information. And then if it's not for me to read and appreciate your comments, there's going to be other people that are going to be appreciating that as well. So until then, all I can say is thank you for sharing. 
Thank you for listening. And until next time, no stress.